What's up everybody? I'm Lost Logan and welcome back to my YouTube channel where I'm traveling the world, getting lost, living on spirited time, and I'm taking you along with me. Let's roll. After being in Wellington for four or five days, I still hadn't gone around the city by myself. So I thought I'd do that this one morning. And lucky for me, I came across this incredible vegan bakery. After the bakery, I uh, went around and explored town a little bit, first checking out the Beehive, which is where all the members of Parliament work and uh, seen the parliament buildings as well. Met up with a friend to go to the Strawberry Festival that was being hosted in the center of the city. Unfortunately, they ran under strawberries and strawberry survey as we got there, as you can see, they're packing up. So we thought, you know what, screw it. We're gonna go get our own strawberries. We're gonna go to the pier and we're gonna have a good day and nonetheless. After doing our own little strawberry day, we split ways for a few hours to run some errands and then came back together to go to the bar, which had really cheap beer. Lucky for us, it was also trivia night. And lucky for me is I found out that the national animal of Scotland is a unicorn. With the ratings of Hotel Waterloo, when I went to Wellington, I only booked six nights. So after a good six days of hanging out with my roomies from Hotel Waterloo, I went over to Trek Global. I quickly got situated at Trek Global because I had to head right back out for a 12 o'clock appointment with the government of New Zealand. Just a parliament tour. Anyway, that was funnier in my head. Ever since watching Jacinda Ardern's final speech as Prime Minister of New Zealand, I've been really inspired to continue making improvements to my community in any way possible. And I thought it'd be really cool to get the opportunity to be in the exact room where she made that speech just under a year after she made it. The rest of the parliament tour was really interesting as the buildings seem to have a history of burning down, which is why they have three distinct different buildings and not one totally combined one as each building keeps getting burned down and rebuilt, uh, which makes for a very unique parliament hill. Obviously I had to leave my name in the visitor book so that I can reflect back the next time I come here as Prime Minister of Canada. After the Parliament tour, I headed back to the downtown area to go see the cable car. A round trip was only $10 New Zealand, and honestly, it's not really necessary, but it's a big part of history in Wellington, and also a pretty cool feat of engineering. So I thought I'd check it out. The cable car is a really unique piece of history for the city of Wellington as it was first opened in 1902, after about a decade of planning and constructing. The reason why the city invested in creating this cable car, although it was gonna be difficult and cost quite a bit of money, was to easily access the land on top of the hill so that it could be maximized for real estate value. Here is a refurbished version of one of the first cable cars that was used on the track. And this is the actual machine room that was used to pull the trolley up the track when it first opened in 1902. A great feat of engineering is that when the first implemented and throughout its lifespan, the cable car basically ran without a hitch and was perfectly safe throughout its entirety.
after a full day of exploring Wellington by myself, I went back to the hostel to see what people were doing. And the night ahead didn't disappoint. I fueled up on another hearty supper, had a few brews and some drinking games, and uh, got ready for some bingo. After that incredible drag show, a few beers, and some hip shaking on the dirty dance floor, the next day was going to be a bit more chill as I checked out the Museum of New Zealand, located right in the heart of downtown on the harbour. The first floor of the museum was more focused on the history of New Zealand in terms of its wildlife and its geography. As you can see in this video, which is the video of Lake Tapo and its volcanic eruptions, which created Lake Tapo in itself. The museum also had an extensive World War I exhibit in which the Kiwis fought in Turkey against the Turks. I was extremely impressed with all the detail of the small exhibits, along with the large wax figures that they had commemorating World War I Kiwi veterans. Next, I stopped in at the Maori exhibit, which really highlighted their culture and their boats. Unfortunately, I couldn't get too many videos as there was no photography in most of the sections due to cultural reasons. There wasn't much planned for the night, so I went back to the hostel, had supper, but the park 10 minutes up the road apparently had glowworms that you could see at night. So. I rallied a few people to go with me and we headed there. And let me tell you, that's pretty cool. Very underwhelming on video, but being there in person was super cool to see these glowworms. On our way back, we found this little kids playground with these zip lines and not gonna lie, kind of the highlight of the night. After the zip line swings, I don't know how, but somehow I was at a bar with a beer in my hand and uh, the dirty dancing started. With having to catch an early ferry the next morning, I thought I'd keep it a bit more chill on my last day. So I caught the bus to Princess Bay Beach, which I heard was an incredible beach. I did this solo, so I want a little time to myself to reflect on Wellington before I packed up, headed to the hostel, chilled out with some friends, and then went to bed for my next adventure on the South Island. First thing I saw right off the bus stop was about five surfers catching some pretty serious waves. So I sat and watched them for 15 minutes, just admiring the skill, and hoping one day I'll actually be able to catch a wave. After that, I sat down on the beach, chilled, and then obviously had to go take a dip. So there you have it. That's Wellington in a nutshell, in my point of view. And it was honestly lots of fun, but I was really looking forward to going to the South Island to see all the beauty it has to offer, stopping in Nelson first. While Auckland, Wellington, and the North Island in general has a lot to offer, I thought it'd be best to spend my months in summer down south. So that's where I'll be, and that's where you'll be with me taking you there. I hope that made sense. I hope you guys enjoyed the Wellington vlogs. For my next vlog is gonna be Avil Tasman, my first great walk, and that was absolutely stunning. And then the real beauty and the real cool vlogs will be up 
later in January and February when I go hiking in Arthur's Pass near Christchurch and then I get my bike and I go on my bike trip. So stay tuned for all the great adventures to come. Can't wait to bring you with me. But for now, stay kind. Get lost.